Well, all righty, everyone. It's Monday night. You know what time it is. It's time for the weekly OTRS Central Q&A video. Hope you guys had some good ones lined up for me this week. Let's see what you got. Get right on into it. All right. BW Roses, Brian, good to hear from you. Do you think the IWC wants their guys to main event because they want what they saw on the indies? Um, yeah, sadly, I think that's a part of it. I don't think that's the entirety of the picture. I think there's a part of it that resents how the WWE will try to force you to like certain people, and naturally people are going to rebel against that because people ultimately don't like being told what to do. I think that's a major part of it, actually. I think a part of it is there became some type of disconnect about what makes good professional wrestling, and we became such an instant gratification society that people like the flips and the kicks and the high spots and the no-selling, and they think the false finishes, and they think that's good or captivating, and it's not. Because to me, a lot of people could do that crap. That doesn't make you a good wrestler. Um, you know, so some of it is too is because of the fact you watch guys for years. So you watch them here and you watch them grow and develop throughout the course of their career. You become more invested in them. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Like for me, when the Bears were heading into the 2000 draft, there was only one player that I wanted, and that was Brian Urlacher from New Mexico. I knew once you figured out a position for him, he was going to be a Hall of Famer. I knew. I knew. He even was telling my dad about it. This guy is going to be incredible. He'll end up with the Bears. I just know it. I sense it. I feel it. And this guy is going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. But it was because I would stay up late at night and watch games when he was at New Mexico. I got invested in him there. And then when he came to the Bears, I became even more invested in him, obviously. And, you know, what do you know? Someday he's going to go on to Canton and be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So there's something there about getting invested in the path and the journey. And some of it is, too, is that a lot of people like us, guys that frankly don't have any business being professional wrestlers, see other guys that kind of frankly look like us that maybe don't have any business being professional wrestlers or don't have any business being top flight, big name professional wrestlers. And they say, hey, I like him because he's like me. And it's OK if you've got one or two guys like that. When you've got a lot of guys like that that are lacking in the larger-than-life personality category, that is a problem. So I think it's a lot of things. I think what you're talking about is one part of it. I think the not being wanting to be told what to like or you know not like, I think that's a huge part of it. So it's more than just one thing. Uh, John Roy, do you think we should get the rights to see the Bullet Club name? Since it has a big popular following, does it? Is this one of these things where the hardcore fan base, and even within that hardcore fan base, a certain segment of that hardcore fan base thinks that they speak for everyone? I don't even know who the fuck all is in the Bullet Club, and I didn't know that I cared. And I didn't know that most American wrestling fans gave two shits about New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm just saying. So no, I don't give a fuck whether or not they use the Bullet Club name or not, because from an American wrestling standpoint, who gives a shit? <coughs> Excuse me, who gives a shit, though? Colton587, what are your thoughts on Samoa Joe possibly moving up to the main roster the night after WrestleMania? I think it would be good timing. You know, I'm still curious what they're going to do with AJ Styles come WrestleMania time. Uh, maybe they are going to go with the Jericho crap. I don't really know. Uh, but you need something for the night after WrestleMania. You know the audience that you're going to be playing to that night. Wouldn't be a bad decision at all. Bama Bug, do you feel the media or actually... This is somebody else that asked me. I apologize, and Bama Bug retweeted. So both uh, K No Nokaj and Bama Bug get the question here. Do you feel the media is overreacting to Cam Newton leaving the post game press conference early? Yes and no. You know, there's always more to the story. You got you know a little bit off in the distance. I can't remember if it was a kid to leave. I think it was Chris Harris though. It's kind of John about uh, the Panthers and how they had stopped them, and he was questioning Cam Newton a little bit. And, you know, to be fair to Cam, I mean that's an incredibly disheartening loss. You know, a game that you should have won and you just didn't. And you just didn't get the job done. And frankly, the way you played in that game and conducted yourself in that game, it felt like the spotlight in the moment was a little bit too big for you. And once the Broncos got to you early, you know, it seemed like he mentally had kind of shut down. And he was unwilling to take over the game to the level that he needed to in order to win a Super Bowl. And maybe this is one of those learning lessons. Not everybody can win a championship, you know, in their first opportunity. Some guys have to learn, have to lose in order to learn how to win. 
and they have to understand that. I point to Kobe Bryant, you know, so so much in a hurry to get Shaq out of town, and then when the Lakers made the finals in 2008, they took on the Celtics, Kobe Bryant frankly played like shit, and he did not understand what his team needed from him in order to be able to win a championship. It took him time to adjust to that alpha dog role. He had to learn how to truly be that great quality alpha dog. You know, it's not just about scoring points. It's about being that utility player, that guy that brings the team what they need when they need it. It's something LeBron struggled with for years. People sit there and kiss his ass in the playoff game because he gives you 25 points, 15 boards, and 10 assists. And they're like, oh, my God, he had a triple-double. He was great. He couldn't have done anything more. Except the problem is, is his team needed him to score 40 that night. And they needed him to control the game that way. It took LeBron a while to learn how to play like that. It took Kobe a while to learn how to play in the right way, being that alpha dog. And Cam Newton, frankly, did not play like the alpha dog that he should have last night. And that's just all there is to it. As far as the press conference goes, you know, he didn't walk off the field after the game was over and not shake anybody's hands. There's that picture of him being smiles and congratulating Pete Manning. I thought he showed class there. He wasn't cussing at people. He wasn't doing bad things. I mean, he walked off. You know, there's something to it. You know, you didn't play well. Your team didn't play well. You lost. Sit there and take it like a man. Easy for us to say because we're the outside looking in. And sometimes this is that media cultivated bullshit because the media is mad that somebody dared walk off on him. And we always have to understand there's a there's a there's a positioning here. There's always something to it. There's a reasoning for a certain propaganda that the media puts out. And they needed something to talk about. The media was pissed at Cam for doing what he did, so a lot of the media lashed out at him. It would have been different if he didn't show up at all. I mean, he could have conducted himself better. I would say to Cam, you gotta man up and you gotta eat it. It's only gonna be a couple minutes anyways, and then it's done. You know, you gotta be bigger than that, you gotta be better than that at that moment. But at the same time, I understand it. I mean, and it's not like he didn't answer any questions. I mean, of course it's going to be, you know, talked about a lot. He could have been classier in that moment. But to sit there and say he showed no class, I think was foolish too. David H., should WWE do a son in the bank match where all the sonless fathers complete, compete for a chance to win a son? You know, we would end up just calling that the breakfast club bowl. That's what it would be. Uh, yes, that would be fucking awesome. It contains the chromosome that they need in the briefcase to make a son. Oh, baby, you want to talk about a real main event of WrestleMania 32? Imagine Triple H and Batista and Sheamus and fucking John Cena trying to get up the ladder. Yeah, I'm going to make a son. No, I'm going to make a son. <laughs> All right, Christian. I already asked that question. That was uh, K. No Gotch. Uh, heel ITG man. Okay, whatever. Uh, how long do you think Triple H will be champion? Um, probably till WrestleMania 32. That's what the story calls for. It's the right decision. And he was the right guy to carry it, um, for that time frame. Ahmed, WrestleMania 32 looks bad so far. Do you agree? Can WWE save it? I agree. It looks bad. It looks really, really bad. And frankly, at this point in time, they're going to need God in that main event of WrestleMania 32, and I, even I'm not sold that he's going to be able to save it. Uh, let's see here. Big Daddy Diesel, if you could book a fatal four-way with one person from the Hogan era, New Generation, Ruthless Aggression era, who would they be and why? I wonder why you asked me for four entrants and only uh, uh, <laughs> in, in only three eras. Um, Hogan era, obviously, would be Hogan. New Generation era. Uh... I guess we'll go with Shawn Michaels. Ruthless Aggression Era, I guess we'll go with uh, um, Brock Lesnar and Taker. There you go. Uh, SAFC Bengals, way too early to pick for Super Bowl 51. Yes, yes, yes. Duke THS, are you going to watch or review Sonny's porno? No. You should know this by now, Duke. You've been watching this channel and me for how many years? I mean, I'm just saying, when have you ever known white girls to be my thing? Furthermore, if I wanted to see Sunny naked, I probably would have just Skyped for her for, what, 10 bucks? On top of that, if I wanted to know what she was like in terms of her sexual performance, I would just basically ask the entire WWE roster of the mid-90s. Eventually, somebody's going to let me know. So, no, I have no curiosity, no interest in seeing it. 
Andy 99, do you think Kurt Angle will have one more run in the WWE before entering the Hall of Fame? I'm not really sure. You might get like a surprise appearance at the Royal Rumble next year or in two years, but I don't know if he'll ever get medically cleared to the point where they would feel confident in him being even a semi-full-time or even part-time in-ring performer with the neck problems. I don't know. So no, I don't think so. Chris Parker, what do you think Tom Brady's biggest weakness is? Um, I mean, you could say from a football standpoint, a lack of mobility. Um, but yeah, I would say his biggest weakness is that for both him and Belichick, is they can fall too much in love with the past. They can become too one-dimensional. They can, they can artificially create their own problem and their own hindrance to their success by being so dependent on the passing game and so confident in the passing game that if the passing game struggles at all, they're fucked. They're fucked. Like you look at that AFC Championship game, and their big weakness to me was that they didn't try to run the ball more. And they didn't do it more on a more consistent basis. Even if you weren't going to be effective, they fell way too love in the passing game. And with the Broncos' defense knowing that they were going to be one-dimensional already and they had made themselves one-dimensional, you've got those great edge rushers in Miller and Ware on the outside. Man, fucking, they're going to have at it. So I think that in part is a weakness sometimes, is there's too much of a belief in the system, too much of a belief by the head coach and the quarterback and the quarterback and the quarterback and too much of a desire to um, go one-dimensional on offense. That's a, that's a weakness, I would think. Uh, Michael Corvin, re realistically, how far do you see Apollo Crews going in WWE? Well, the fact that he's legit only five foot eleven hurt him. <sighs> you know, when we're talking about Apollo Crews, let's just call it as we really see it. His height is not going to be his biggest hindrance to getting a world championship if you know what I mean. I mean, you're not saying it's the only thing that's going to hurt him. You're just saying it's something that could hurt him. Now, you've had other champions that are six foot and under, so it might not help him, but I don't know if it's necessarily going to be a hindrance. Uh, his pigment, though, that will be a huge hindrance. And until proven otherwise, I'm correct about it, period. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chris, off Leather Wings, will you ever do a Most Overrated Wrestlers of All Time video? Uh, I thought I did in the past, but maybe that was on the old channel. Maybe I'll do one at some point in time, maybe. Um, do you think, also, you have a big enough audience to where you could do topics about wrestling history than only current stuff? You know, I think a lot of times when they go into videos, when talking about the present and the future, I talk about the past. I don't know if I need to do a whole bunch of stuff about wrestling history. I've got the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series Review Series. I talk about the past in great length. A lot of people might argue that I live in the past too much, so why would they want to see more videos about me talking about the past when I can't seem to live in the moment of the now? <laughs> <laughs> Tie trap. Injury aside, what do you think of the possibility of a Daniel Bryan versus Undertaker match at WrestleMania? No. Just no. Fuck no! Fuck that shit. Period. Michael Corvin's got a couple others. Should the great Muda be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame someday? Sure, why not? And he says he hates this as a possibility, but do you think WWE will put Lesnar in the Hall of Fame because of his win at WrestleMania 30? They'll put Lesnar in the Hall of Fame because by that point, John will have earned it. So there you go. Uh, Alexander, which Hulk Hogan would you like to see more if he were still around? The NWO Hollywood Hogan or the Red and Yellow? Yeah. I just want to see Hogan back in the WWE. It's therapeutic. Be beneficial for all parties. He wear whatever the hell color he wants. I'm saying. I'd, I'd personally like it if Hogan came out in like early 90s cross colors gear. Oh, that'd be fucking epic and awesome with a Malcolm X t-shirt. It's a whole new Hulk Hogan. It's Equality Hulk. Yeah! <laughs> Wearing a Feel the Burn shirt. <laughs> Son Goshuaku. <laughs> really enjoyed your Star Wars Episode 7 review. What are the chances we get to hear your thoughts on Rocky 1 uh, through Creed? Um, you're talking about all of those Rocky videos, movies? Um, I haven't seen Creed yet. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Hopefully I get to see it soon. Rocky 1 was great. Rocky 2, I think, was even a little better. Rocky 3 was fantastic because of the 
introductions to larger audience of Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Rocky IV is the second best movie that has ever been made because whereas in Space Jam, the greatest movie ever made, it was a true story about how Michael Jordan saved the universe from basketball playing aliens called the Monsters. For God's sake, they had Sean Bradley's power. Sean Bradley! Now here we go, Rocky IV, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky Balboa, single-handedly defeats Ivan Drago and ends communism in Mother Russia. He ended the Cold War, for Christ's sakes. He ended it! All these far-right whack jobs that want to sit there and give credit to Ronald Reagan, you can all eat shit. It was Rocky Balboa and his victory over Ivan Drago. True story. Rest at fucking Rocky IV. Almost said WrestleMania IV. Whatever. Should have been at WrestleMania IV. In Rocky IV. That ended the Cold War. That brought an eventual end to communism in the Soviet Union. Second greatest movie ever made. We don't acknowledge Rocky V because that movie sucked dick. Then we get to uh, the Rocky Balboa movie, and I thought that was pretty good because I love the concept that they had going. You know, those things that we talk about where it's uh, what would happen, this legend from 30 years ago versus this top guy of today. I liked that movie a lot. I really, really did. And actually, at the end of the day, after Rocky IV, which is the second greatest movie of all time, my second favorite Rocky movie is actually Rocky Balboa. I really think so. Could be Creed when all is said and done. I just haven't seen Creed yet. Uh, Larrikin, do fans who are still crying out for Daniel Bryan to return um, show how tasteless professional wrestling has become? Um, nah, I'm not going to put that on them. Nah, they just want to see one of their favorites back. They're frustrated with it, and they also see the lack of talent on the WWE main roster right now. Frankly, it wouldn't break my heart to see Daniel Bryan come back. And I'm no Daniel Bryan, you know, fanboy. We know that for sure. We definitely definitely add a little bit of life to the product, give us the potential to have something interesting, An another player with some name recognition of some significance. would be potentially only positives on the one hand. There are other negatives that come along and come associated with that which is the fans hijacking the show if Daniel Bryan's not involved in the main event, and that's a dangerous thing to worry about. Um, but, you know, I don't know that it's about how tasteless it's become. I would say the fact that the people that are saying they wanted him back at the 2016 Royal Rumble and they wanted him to main event WrestleMania 32, yeah, I think that would speak a little bit more to the lack of taste in the professional wrestling fans of today. But there's so many other things that speak to that, and it's, so many other things that speak to the ills of business today, too. Andrew Harrington, what was Summer's reaction to Roman Reigns winning the world title last December? You can only imagine how happy and excited she was. And I believe her exact quote to Triple H was, we'll see what WrestleMania, bitch. Uh, let's see here. Jimmy Purifoy, how would you book a Paulo Cruz if he were on the main roster? I would make sure I booked him in a way that the WWE has never booked a a black man to be taken 100% seriously. Basically, book him like he's a white guy and then see what happens. I mean, seriously, the best way to get Apollo Crews over is to tell Vince McMahon he's white. Tell Kevin Dunn he's white. And then book him as such. Maybe you've got something. Uh, James Faluca. Question, which rivalry do you think was better, Taker versus Kane or Taker versus Mankind? A lot of people point to Taker versus Kane because you got the multiple WrestleMania matches, there's so much history and there's so much story there. And I get that. But I might actually go with Taker versus Mankind. Mankind came in, I think, at a very important time for Taker in 96, helped that Taker character turn a bit of a corner, got more out of Taker because he got to 94, 95. Taker was kind of there, but he was starting to get lost in the shuffle a little bit. I thought Mankind in 96 came along at the perfect time and helped get something interesting and compelling out of The Undertaker and started to show the WWE even more ways that they could versatilely use this guy. And then you go throughout the next couple of years and you culminate with King of the Ring 98 and that epic classic that happened there. You know, I might say Taker versus Mankind over Taker versus Kane, but it, it's hard to choose either one of them, honestly. Uh, Biznick64, Vince offered you a contract at WrestleMania 30 to end the streak, and you had 100% creative control over your character, would you? No. No. Hell no. 
Uh -uh. I mean, obviously, they're going to pay me to job to take her. You know, because Jeff Daddy ain't working free that night. I assure you of that. But, man, I'd be bumping and flipping and flopping all over the fucking place trying to make that match a classic for Taker. Yeah, you know, make sure at the end of the day, even if he was knocked out cold because of a concussion, he still somehow magically rose up from above, beyond the grave, to pin my ass one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Chase Oliver, when am I going to be in the triple threat, brother? I don't know. That's a good question. I didn't know there was a certain period of time that you were in the triple threat. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Uh, and then he also asked, have you ever played Madden? And was there a player that sucked in real life but was a beast in the game? Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, when years, years back, when I used to play, you know, man, I play in Dynasty mode, uh, pre-playing it on the Internet type of days, I would always play with the Bears. So, you know, if the quarterback was, let's say, uh, Rex Grossman, he sucked in real life. Man, by the end of the year for me, Rex Grossman, even on fucking all mad mode, he'd be thrown for like 7,000 yards and 80 goddamn touchdown passes because I had control of him. The Schleg daddy knew how to play quarterback. I'll put it that way. Uh, don't play much anymore because I don't even have a gaming system, which is fine. I don't feel like I'm missing a lot. I'm in my mid-30s. You know, I have a job. I do this shit here. I do the football channel as well. I do a lot on DraftKings, FanDuel. I've got the lady here. I've got the two dogs. Now two dogs. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that yet. The two cats. You know, there's just a lot of other stuff that I'm doing. So just not a lot of time to play a lot of video games. I miss playing Madden. Wish I could play Madden more. Even though I started in the late 2000s to gain more of an affinity for college football. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Prince of Strong Style 9, same concepts, different pre presentation. The perfect way to describe the fans and Cornette's views on wrestling. No, I don't really think so. I think it's kind of the fans don't know what they really want. Or if they do, they don't understand why the business can't give it to them in that way. And somebody like Jim Cornette represents the old school, which is not necessarily the correct school anymore. Living in an alternate universe, a different reality than the real reality of today. All right. I think that's it. Any more questions or are we pretty much done? Yeah, I think we're done. All right. So, again, thank you guys very much for all of your questions. I'll be back again next Monday with another Q&A video. Uh, remember... Remember that the Raw review will be coming up uh, soon. I've got the Triple Threat video was just put up on Sunday. I've got my thoughts about the Road Dog and what he said about wins and losses not counting. That's up on this channel too. Um, you know, so all types of good stuff. So check it out. And again, thanks to you guys for all your questions. See you later. Bye-bye.